Um, so the first place we're going to play today um, is very exciting. Um, and I play, well we play, James Oswald all the time, um, our regular listeners will know, and um, often from the airs for the seasons. Um, but what we haven't done really, I think we haven't played from the airs for the autumn for the first set. And this actually is in manuscript in the Whitener collection, as you can see here. So this is it probably, almost certainly, Oswald's own hand. Um, so very exciting for us. Um, so what's the first piece? We're going to play uh, the Sweet Sultan from this. Which is a uh, very nice one. It's in three sections, as, as often the Oswald airs are. An andante, an allegro, and then a hornpipe. James Oswald pieces published, Sue asks. Um, there are a few of the airs of the seasons which have been published uh, not all at <coughs> once. Um, into collections. Into, into slight, slightly or, shorter collections. Of other, often with other things, aren't they? 
Absolutely. And um, yeah, really, really nice additions. Um, but actually, to be quite honest, the originals are really readable. Um, and you can, uh, for a small fee, um, order them from the Whiten collection, from the Dundee Library, and they will send you, they will send you the um, uh, sort of uh, digital copy of them, which we did. And uh, all is all as well. So actually, to be honest, um, that might be your best bet. In a sense, um, an edition sort of doesn't need to be. It's not in any weird clefts, and it's quite. It's very clear. Yeah. So, um, so, it's, so there it's, you go. It's, it's worth using those. Okay, Tom. Do you want to introduce the John Reed our next piece? I'd love to. Yeah. Well, John Reed. Um, a, a lot of our regular Hesperi listeners will probably recognise uh, the, the, the composer John Reed, because there's a, um, one of our real sort of stock pieces um, that we play um, both as a duo and also as an ensemble of four with Magda and Florence as well. And this was part of our um, programme, The Pheasant's Eye, and it was even one that was um, danced to um, as part of our collaboration with a Highland dancer. And this is another one from the same collection. Um, it's, it's quite a new discovery for us because we've, we've often um, sort of gone back to, to our old favourite <laughs> yes, exactly. very often. But this is somehow rather different in character. It's kind of into a gallant style. Um, some of the features of the sort of classical type of writing that you, you'll hear in this. Quite a florid um, melodic line, um, but with quite simple harmony. That, that's the sort of thing, isn't it? It's, it's, it's actually very simple in the harmony often, but um, very decorated in the melodic part. And of course, um, it's not supposed to be played on the recorder, it's far too late for that, so I'm being very historically inauthentic. And it's three movements, it's an allegro, a, larg uh, a largo, and then a very, very fun presto, which to me sounds like it's, it's conjuring yeah. up images of things that he might have heard in Edinburgh.
Oh, thank you, everybody. I think this is one of the most lovely pieces we've come across recently. Really, really nice. Okay, now I'm going to absent myself for a minute, and Tom has a piece to play. That's right, and um, this is a piece by the composer called Elizabeth Hardin. Um, she only lived, she lived from 1750 until 1780, so she died at the age of 30. Um, and she was a composer who, um, I came across um, th this collection of works in the Wyden collection when we visited there in 2018. But funnily enough, um, it has then since been interesting from another angle, which is my city organist project, which I'm currently working on. Um, and a friend of mine and I are currently working on a, a project to do with the lost city churches, a lot of the churches which were destroyed both in the Great Fire, um, also in the war, and in the, uh, the time when a lot of the churches were closed down and amalgamated. So Elizabeth Hardin was a city church organist in London. And you may think that's, that's unusual um, to have a, a woman organist in that time. But you'd be wrong, because most of the churches at that time um, had several women organists over this over this period. It's really quite fascinating. Um, and um, she was the organist of a church called St Peter um, Le Poor, which um, now doesn't exist, but there's another church of that name in North London, which was made when that church was closed down. Anyway, um, this is um, one of her six lessons for the harpsichord. It has an allegro and a minuet, and um, it's very, it's very sort of early piano-like. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
have noticed I was, I was really playing right at the very top of this keyboard because this, this particular harpsichord is um, quite a lot earlier than the, um, Too short. Than, the, than the music that would have originally this had been for. So it was really right up at the top. I hope you enjoyed listening to that. Elizabeth Hardin, wonderful composer. Okay, now moving on to some William McGibbon, um, fantastic violinist of the 18th century um, in Edinburgh mostly. Uh, well, he did spend a little time in London, I think, and he published, I think, four pretty large volumes of Scots tunes um, in the 1740s. Um, so we're going to play two, and the first one is Bonnie Dundee, of course, and the second one, um, Cock Up Your Beaver, or Johnny Cock Thy Beaver, um, uh, a very familiar song to some of you. Um, I used to play this with my dad on the, uh, the piano on the, on the uh, recorder when I was little. During Bonnie Dundee, the sun came out <laughs> in the most beautiful way into our living room. It's gone again, but you know. Um, just for Bonnie Dundee, we had sunshine. All right. Um, one of a composer very, very well known in the 18th century who we play often in our Wednesday concerts is San Martini, Giuseppe San Martini or San Martini. And, um, there are loads of mentions of San Martini in the Whiten Collection catalogue, mainly as um, a composer of smaller minuets mm. or smaller dance movements in larger miscellaneous collections. Um, and in fact, there aren't any sonatas by him in the collection, but we're going to play one today in a kind of cheeky 
um, <laughs> cheeky sort of connection here. Um, so this is a very, very amazing sonata in D minor, um, which I think we played some of it in various different concerts over the last year, but never all, the, all three movements, have we? So we have an allegro manon tanto, and what else? I never did drop the program, did I? I should drop it in a minute.
himself um yes. well he doesn't have to you can stay there if you want no i'll, I'll go out he'll go I'll out go after, he's sure. gonna go okay um i'm going to play um three little short um tunes from a really interesting publication which is in the whiten collection and also um in the british library where i've been looking at it more recently and it's called um <laughs> it's called a collection of original scots tunes full of the highland humors and it was published in 1700 in fact it was the first um, we believe, publication of printed Scots tunes that declared themselves to be Scots tunes. Um, and interestingly, it was published in London. Um, so a lot of people uh, have often thought perhaps it doesn't, the, the tunes aren't really Scottish. Um, but when you sort of analyse them, a lot of the tunes are actually to be found in um, older Scottish manuscripts, uh, main manuscript collections. And um, the others are perhaps just ones we don't know of, um, and there are definitely some new compositions in there. Um, I'm going to play three, Killy Cranky, which you will probably all recognise, uh, My Lady Hope's Scotch Measure, and then what we have at the end, a new Scotch measure. Now this new Scotch measure I think is an imitation Scotch tune, Scots tune. Uh, see what you think of it. There's something that's sort of immediately wrong with it to me, but see if you can kind of spot it. mistaken and I'm no musical analyst um, that last tune um, it goes back to the tonic to which is F major at the end of each half and in Scots tunes we would normally kind of stay in the relative minor so it, it's, 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 it's getting close it's got some features and lots of pentatonics that you might think might be Scots but um, it, I think it may be an imitation but that's fine you know interesting Okay, uh, where are we now? We're on the Claggett. We're on to Walter Claggett, and this was, uh, this is one of our favourite finds um, that we that we came across in the Wyden collection, um, and it, it it's just an amazing it's an amazing thing, and it's the sort of piece that had we not just picked it up off the shelf thinking oh I wonder what's that, um, we might not have found it, and it's a really wonderful part of our repertoire now, and we enjoy playing it a lot because it's um, it's it's got a sort of really really original um, feel to it somehow. It's by the composer called Walter Claggett, who we believe was an Irish composer. Um, qu quite how it came into the collection, I'm not sure. Maybe some of you from the Wyden collection know more about it, but it's certainly one that we really enjoy playing. 
This is going to be solo number five. Um, it's a largo, um, an allegro, and then a minuet and a, and a jig. A very to quick with. jig. But it's got some. It's got some wonderfully rich harmonies to get our teeth into. <laughs>
um, a piece f um, by, written by Robert Bremner. Um, it's called Joy to Great Caesar. Sounds very interesting title. It's actually really a setting of um, the bass part called La Folia, um, which, which is an interesting bass part because it kind of modulates into the relative major. So it does this and then it goes into the major and then back to the minor. It's one of the most common um, bass parts for Baroque variation settings. Um, there's hundreds of them. Um, so I hope you enjoy listening to this particular setting of the folia, George the Great Caesar. Oh, it's actually really stressful watching that. Yeah. <laughs> I said, just the look of concentration on your face. 
<sighs> I hardly breathed. Okay, brilliant stuff. Um, okay. Um, oh, a good question just before our last music. Love the relations one. These ones are available from Whiten, but I think not digitally. Um, you can get them on, uh, I think... Where did I get the Bremner? I think the Bremner Harpsichord Miscellany is on the British Library Electronic Free Catalogue. And possibly um, also on IMSLP. And possibly also on IMSLP. There are, ki- there are some editions kicking around. There are. I so, think yeah, if you, you search on IMSLP, I think it's there, actually. Yeah, I think so. And it's, it's got also some bits about continual playing and also some ornament tables. Um, Interesting. Lots, lots of different... It's, it's really a study book, so it's got some very simple pieces for, for um, the learning of the harpsichord. Exactly. Okay, last but not least, just a little quick piece of uh, James Oswald to finish. Um, again from his uh, Ears for the Autumn, 1755, and it's called The Marvel of Peru. And I should say that for anyone who, who doesn't know, these airs are all uh, named after a flower or a plant. No, it's I don't particularly have... fun, this one. This is very fun. Hope you enjoy one it. of the movements is marked Comic. <laughs> identified the comic movement. (laughs) 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 Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. Sorry, we've overrun a little there. (laughs) That was brilliant. Thank you, Wolves. Aha, now we can see everyone. Now we can see everyone. (laughs) Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. (laughs) Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Those of you who are joining joining us for the first time on the the White Room. Delighted to see you. You can keep up with what we're doing either on our web page or our Facebook page. Our next two events are Saturday morning. Our mixed instrument class is having a workshop from the wonderful fiddle player Gavin Marwick. 
and on the third Wednesday, third of March, we are having. Um, although I really shouldn't <laughs> do this because it clashes with. We might change our time. We might. You don't. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll have experts on our former secretary actually, Simon <laughs> Chadwick, who will be playing for us. Oh, oh, that would be lovely. Oh. Which will be lovely. Yes, and. Uh, all the white people are going, yay! Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's heard it. Um, as a, we do have time for an encore if you'd like to give us one. Yeah, what do we think? Um, well, we could Hands do an... Up for an encore. Yeah, okay, fine. Right. <laughs> um, I think we'll go into the Oswalds. We'll go into the Oswalds, obviously. Let's let's dip out of autumn, shall we? We'll dip out of um, autumn. Shall we look forward to spring? Let's look forward to spring. Because of that sun that came earlier. I wonder if we could actually do the tulip. Because we've got the tulips yes. behind us. Yes, hey guys, look at this. Look at these lovely tulips which we acquired just for this concert. Let's okay, play the. Let, mute the again, please. <laughs> lovely, mute again, mute everybody. Again. And this is James Oswald, the tulip. I kind of know this by heart, but. Um, uh, uh, normal okay. repeat, yes. Yeah. Got to make these decisions before you start, ideally. <laughs> 